hiking alone or traveling alone in general can be quite scary and actually also a bit dangerous but also a lot of fun you can always minimize the risk of getting injured or lost or <laughs> murdered <laughs> with just taking some precautions and today i made a list of 11 things that i always try to do or that i will be doing in the future to make my trips as safe as possible so here we go before we get into the 11 things that i listed up i just want to get one big misconception out of the way that i get all the time that is that when i tell people that i go hiking solo their concern is mostly that i get murdered or that i get kidnapped or that anything would go wrong in terms with meeting people and just humans being bad that's a big misconception because the risks of hiking solo or uh, traveling solo are mostly not in bad humans or humans with bad intentions but more in the environment that you're in be more scared of like animals and weather and tripping and falling in a slope that's more likely to happen and that brings me to my first thing on my list and that is if you go hiking solo be sure that you are well prepared for the terrain you're going to so there are two big pointers in this point and that is weather and animals so first really look up the weather the temperature but also the climate is it wet is it not wet do i need to take rain gear like is there a chance of me getting hypothermia or is it really hot and do i need to take a hat to protect myself from the sun or getting a really bad sunburn do i have enough water storage or if it's a really wet trail do i have shoes that have enough grip so that when the terrain is wet and slippery i wouldn't fall like really look up the weather conditions of your trail and take the gear that you need for these conditions also like your sleeping bag your sleeping mattress you want to get a good night's sleep so that you're focused when you hike and you won't trip and fall that's the first thing weather but also animals look up the wildlife on the trail that you're going to hike maybe there are bears maybe there are snakes or mountain lions or maybe just ticks that's a big thing on trails or maybe you are going to a country that has mosquitoes that carry bad diseases and be prepared to meet an animal like that and also to treat yourself when you get attacked by an animal like that so for example if there are bears on trail be sure that you know how to act when you meet a bear on trail because acting near a bear is very different than acting to a mountain lion or any other animal like maybe sheep or an aggressive uh, deer or cow or horse anything like that just be sure that you know how to behave when you meet one and also how to treat yourself when an animal attacks you so for example when a snake bites you you probably would want to know what to do when a snake bites you this point is really where a lot of accidents on trail happen so be prepared for it the second tip is to keep at least one person informed on where you are and what your plans are for the next coming days i'm guilty i'm really i'm guilty of this i've always been the kind of person that told my family and my friends like yeah i'm gone don't be too concerned about me being in the mountains if you don't hear anything from me it's better than when you hear anything from me so don't be scared i probably don't have any phone reception so don't be concerned i'll be fine mm -hmm. and that's really not what you want to do <laughs> recently well not recently like half a year ago i made a video about my post gr20 experience and it's quite a scary story but like spoiler alert nothing happened but still i still <laughs> i still have some nightmares 
<laughs> of that evening. Ah. But that situation could have been so much safer if I knew that somebody knew what was going on with me and where I was going and where I was. Really be sure that you inform someone, at least one person. And if you don't have any phone reception, you don't have an excuse because that brings me to my third tip. That is to bring a kind of spot device or some sort of Garmin in reach device. These devices are kind of emergency devices. The cheapest ones are just able to send a signal to the authorities when you really need help. It sends your GPS signal to the authorities and they mostly, probably, hopefully, come and get you. The middle class ones, and those are probably, I think, the ones that I want, will have the same function of like sending your signal, your GPS signal to the authorities, but also they will be able to send your location to someone at home. Like every night you can just press a button and it automatically sends your location to someone at home. Then the people at home just know every night where you are and when they get this signal they know that you are safe. So when they don't get a signal for like one night they can kind of get concerned and maybe take some action. And then you have the really expensive ones. Well, for me it's really expensive. It's like 400 euros for the device, something like that. With this device you can also send a message, like type text to people, like people at home, but also people on trail. If they also have this device, you can communicate with each other. Then the fourth thing I have on my list is a really small thing. It is just take a whistle with you. If something happens, for example, you trip and fall in a slope, you can just whistle on your little whistle and maybe hikers that pass by will hear you or uh, the authorities when they get your GPS signal uh, come to the place but you're in a slope so you're hard to find. You can blow the whistle or if you get attacked by anything, you can blow the whistle. You get what I mean. Take a whistle, it's not heavy and it's really nice to have it. The fifth thing is <laughs> something that I'm also guilty of, hence the post GR20 experience. Always trust your gut feeling. Always. If you think something is not safe, if you think someone is not safe, if you think the weather is not safe or anything, just trust your gut feeling and your gut feeling's probably right. For example, you go. <laughs> For example, you meet someone that offers you a place to sleep, but you don't really trust that person. Maybe don't go with that person. That was me. That was me. Okay. The sixth thing is also something that I'm that I'm guilty of. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be so much safer in the future, really. And um, the sixth thing is don't share your plans on social media. When I went on previous hikes, so the GR20, Tour de Mont Blanc, Kungsleden, West Highland Way, I always shared which hike I was gonna do and where I was on the hike because I was posting stories when I had phone reception because I just wanted to share my experience and I wanted to share where I am and how beautiful the mountains looked and everything but now I don't really feel so safe around that anymore I don't really like that everyone can just look at my Instagram stories and know where I am at that exact moment and I am alone so I'm really vulnerable so I don't want that I don't share my exact location on social media anymore. The seventh thing on the list is also a really small one and it is to not wear earplugs during the night when you're wild camping alone and also not putting your music or podcasts or anything that you're listening to during the day too loud. You always want to be wary of your environment and obviously you always want to know what's going on around you so just don't wear earplugs during the night. If you're wild camping alone, if you're on a campsite, I mean, it's probably fine. You just always have to be informed 
on what happens around you on trail and also during the night. The eighth thing on my list is a really helpful one and I always do this on trails. It is talk to the hikers that come from the other way. Like ask them, are there any streams coming up? Are there hard sections coming up? Or in the evenings, like are there any camp spots coming up? Just inform yourself on the things that are coming in the near future so you can be prepared for the things that are coming in the near future. Socialize a bit on trail. It's nice. The ninth thing on my list is something that I'm also very guilty of, but that I'm learning step by step. It is to not let your ego make decisions around safety. With your ego, I mean like maybe your stubbornness or your drive to prove yourself to yourself or other people. For example, if you're lost, don't cut the trail off. Um, I recently made a video about that, about getting lost on trail. And my biggest problem with getting lost on trail is that when I am lost, I don't want to admit that I'm lost and I don't want to turn back. I always want to cut the trail off, like the trail is here, I'm here, I went like this. I never want to go like this and then like that. I always want to go like this. So for example, I did this on the GR20 and that's a really dangerous trail with a lot of stones where you really have to scramble a lot. You don't want to do this on this trail, just don't. Go back and don't let your ego make decisions. For example, also, if there's a storm coming up and you have to climb onto a mountain, just don't do it. It's not safe. Just turn back without shame if anything indicates that you should. And then the 10th and the 11th thing on my list are just situations that occur on hiking solo or traveling solo. And the first one is hitchhiking. If you want to hitchhike, always make sure that you take a picture of the license plate and preferably also a picture of the person that takes you and send it to a friend or a family member or anyone who is at home. And just don't make this a big deal. Just take a picture and maybe like ask, can I maybe take a picture of you? Because yeah, my parents, they, uh, they worry a lot and they really want to know who I'm with um, all the time because I'm traveling solo. Just make it a little bit like this. And um, most people will be totally fine with this. This is something that um, someone commented on my GR20 video um, and it's really something that I will be doing in the future because it's just why not? Also when you hitchhike just be sure to keep your little expensive important things with you so your phone, your wallet, anything that is little that you can just put in your pocket, take it out of your bag if it's in your bag and take it with you near you. And then my 11th thing on the list is something that I also learned out of the comments of my GR20 video and that is um, when you're in a situation of being in a town at night and having no place to sleep so all the hotels are booked and there are no campsites and you cannot wild camp firstly you can avoid this by just booking a room or a spot at a campsite to days prior to being in this town. If it still occurs that you are in a village at night where you don't have any place to sleep, a really good tip that I got from someone is call the police. Like, for example, I was in um, Lille Rousse in uh, Corsica and I didn't have any place to sleep and there were like plates everywhere where it said you're not allowed to wild camp. But there was a big beach where I could wild camp if I was allowed to. So in this situation, if you call the police, they can like maybe tell you there's a place for you. Like these rules of wild camping are just to keep everything in this town in order and just to prevent everybody from just um, wild camping wherever they want. But it's not supposed to bring someone in danger. If there for any reason isn't any police in the village that you are, 
you can always like just ring random doorbells and ask the people in the houses if they maybe have a spot in their garden where you can put up your tent. Voila! Those were the 11 things that I could come up with. If you have any safety measures that you do that I didn't mention in this video, please tell me. I'm always willing to learn and yeah, it's just really interesting for other people to read other people's experience and also for me. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I will make some more videos in the near future because I know I have been gone for some time and I've been fine because I've been getting some concerned messages like are you okay with the whole pandemic and we haven't been hearing from you. I'm totally fine. I've just been busy. I've just been busy. I was graduating from two degrees. One is finished and the other one is now postponed to September because of the pandemic. Um, and I'm also I'm, I'm, I'm making a book. <laughs> it's in Dutch, so you probably won't be interested, but I'm making a graphic novel and I'm in the drawing phase right now. So I'm just drawing 24 seven mainly. So yeah, I hope I will see you in the near future or you will see me in the near future. And if you like this video, if you like my content in general, I make videos about hiking, please maybe like this video. It helps me a lot and maybe consider subscribing. It also helps me a lot. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>